In this video, I'll tell you why I think the William Optics Zenith Star 61 APO is an excellent choice for deep sky astrophotography with a DSLR camera. I'll cover the features and specs for this telescope, as well as share some deep sky image examples using it. This is the William Optics Zenith Star 61 APO review. The Zenith Star 61, or just Z61, is tiny. In fact, it's the most portable telescope ever made by William Optics, a company known for their high-quality apochromatic refractors. The Z61 was built to last. Owners of the Zenith Star have praised William Optics for the attention to detail and overall finish of this scope. The Z61 includes inspection badges throughout to remind you that this instrument has been tested before arriving in your hands. The reason for the excellent optical quality of the Z61 is thanks to the FPL53 glass, also known as synthetic fluorite. The dispersion properties of the objective lens determine the overall color correction. FPL 53 is as close as you can get to pure fluorite, which means that your images will be ultra crisp with sharp, colorful stars. This is proven in the refractive index chart at williamoptics.com. FPL 53 glass resides at the best correction end of the graph. This is also why FPL 53 is the most expensive material in the current market. Once you get accustomed to astro images at this level, it's hard to switch from an ED refractor to other, other telescope designs. Looking for some more examples? Check out my top 5 astrophotography telescopes for beginners at astrobackyard.com. This tiny refractor has an objective lens of 61mm. The focal ratio is a quick f5.9 and the focal length is 360mm. This is great for ultra wide field views of the night sky. Many of you are like myself using a crop sensor DSLR which multiplies the focal length by 1.6. So for me with the Canon T3i that brings the focal length to a modest 571 millimeters. The Zenith Star 61 retails for 398 US dollars. Quite affordable considering this is a doublet apochromatic refractor. Now that price includes the telescope only and it's worth mentioning the recommended accessories to go along with it. One of the first ones is the color matched dovetail plate. Here it is in the gold to match my scope. I actually didn't require a dovetail plate to start using this right away as I was able to mount the rotatable L bracket onto the Ioptron Skyguider Pro right away. And if I was to use this on the HEQ5 mount, I would need to use this dovetail plate uh, for uh, correct fit. More importantly is the flat 61 field flattener. So what a field flattener does is it evens out the field of view, meaning that stars right to the edge of the field will be sharp as opposed to elongated at the edge. It's, that's just a flat field. The recommended flattener for the Z61 is the William Optics Flat 61. It's a perfect match for the F5.9 telescope. This flattener requires a different T-mount adapter for your camera. It's different than the standard T-mount adapter that you may already own. So as you can see, this is the, this is the one I use for flatteners and uh, reducers in the past, but it doesn't fit the flat 61. So if you're shooting with a DSLR, I recommend getting the Canon T-mount adapter and the William Optics flat 61 field flattener. At $170 US, 
it's something to think about and to factor into the overall cost. So the Z61 comes with this roto lock adapter here for an inch and a quarter eyepieces or um, a diagonal and it's really it's really solid but uh, unfortunately I, I won't be taking advantage of it because I need this two inch tube here to uh, attach my imaging train so <laughs> it took me longer than it should have to figure this out but you actually need to remove the compression ring something I've never had to do before and then the field flattener with this uh, ro the rotatable ring here threads directly into the telescope it was a little strange for me but in the end it makes for a much more secure fit as it's threaded into place as opposed to just being held by a compression ring. It makes for a super solid, I use the word super too much in these vlogs, I realize that, a rock solid connection between the camera and the telescope and it reminds me of uh, connecting a telephoto lens to the DSLR. They kind of unite as one and it is so solid, um, which is great for astrophotography because you don't need any extra wobbliness in there. I brought this telescope with me last month on a camping trip to some dark skies. Needless to say, the Z61 did not disappoint. I was able to capture a new portrait of the Andromeda Galaxy uh, using just a DSLR camera, a modified camera, and a simple remote shutter release cable. No auto guiding, no laptop, um, just a very simple setup on the Ioptron Skyguider Pro, a very portable mount. The reason I didn't need auto guiding for uh, an image with sharp stars, uh, long exposures, was um, due to a, both a precise polar alignment on the Ioptron, as well as the forgiving wide field of view in the Z61. Under a higher magnification there may have been some slight star trailing without auto guiding and three minute exposures, but uh, at the field of view with the William Optics uh, they were sharp all the way through the 180 second exposures. So in conclusion, what do I think of this scope? Uh, I actually, I really love it. What I love about it is the size of it, the portability, the lightweight, the, the high quality images it produces, the dual speed focuser uh, that is easily lockable, the fact that I can run it on a small portable mount like the iOptron Skyguider Pro, which I normally just use for a DSLR with a camera lens, but this scope is so small and so lightweight. Uh, using the counterweight, uh, I can mount this telescope to it it's an ultra portable setup that I'll be bringing all over the place now. What don't I like about it? The price is great. It's just that you have to factor in if you want to get this field flattener, which I really do recommend. It's 170 US dollars. So, you know, you, you see that price tag of 398 and you say, okay, I'm good to go for $400, but no, you want to get that field flattener. So you've got to add that extra cost in there. If you happen to need a dovetail bar or some of the other accessories, you'll have to factor in that as well. Overall though, it's an excellent value for what you get. Uh, I am super happy with this telescope. I guess you could say I'm a little biased because I absolutely love refractors. Uh, and I think it's because I came from a photography background and these refractors just remind me of the, uh, the Canon telephoto uh, high-end L-series lenses. So if it's within your budget and you want some wide field deep sky astrophotography and you want, uh, you don't want to mess around with uh, focusing issues and balancing issues and you want something that's reliable, uh, you really can't go wrong with the William Optics Zenith Star 61 APO.